Hey guys, what is up? Today we're gonna do a little bit of a different video. I was feeling a little under the weather today and have sat right here on this couch pretty much all day. Been reading this book here. And I thought, you know what? With as much as I love books and since I've been reading a book all day, I should make a video about books and so show you guys some of my favorite videos. So I thought I should do a bookshelf tour video. So if you're interested in that, if you wanna know what kind of books I like, what I'm reading, what books I'd recommend for others, then stick around. But we're gonna go upstairs to my bookshelf, so come on. All right guys, here we are. Here is my bookshelf. You can't see the bottom part yet, but hopefully you'll be able to see that in the other shots like this. Anyway, here are some of my books. So they're kind of arranged categorically. So the top shelf I've got is what I just kind of call like Christian motivational books and so folks like Carl Lentz are on this shelf. We've got Levi Lusco, R. McManus on this shelf. Also have like Francis Chan and David Platt and Judah Smith and Stephen Furtick and a whole lot of guys. Um, some of my favorite books from this shelf would be my Bob Goff books. Love Does is just an incredible book and the follow-up Everybody Always was amazing as well. I found these books to be super, super inspirational and just really challenged me to think differently about the people right in front of me. And his storytelling is amazing. So if you're looking just for like a light book to read, maybe something on vacation or maybe something that just is enjoyable, enjoyable to read and makes you kind of want to grow a little bit but isn't too intellectual, I would say Bob Goff is a great place to start. Or another person very similar is I've got a couple Donald Miller books right here. You might be able to see I've got Blue Like Jazz, a Million Miles in a Thousand Years, and Searching for God Knows What, they're all on this shelf. Blue Like Jazz, I read in one sitting and was just amazed by it. I read it at the beach a couple years ago, and it just blew my mind. And I would highly, highly recommend it. It looks like this. I believe the subtitle is Non-Christian Thoughts on, or Non-Religious Thoughts on Christian Spirituality. You should totally check it out. It's a great book. Donald Miller is a brilliant, brilliant writer. Also on this shelf, I have a couple relationship books. So I've got like Love, Sex, and Dating by Andy Stanley. I would highly recommend this for anyone who is interested in any of those three things. He gets really honest, just really real in this book, and it's super practical. I can't recommend it enough. Also along the relationship lines, I believe I have Swipe Right by Levi Lesko up here. Really great book there. I really enjoy Erwin McManus's book. So I have The Last Arrow and The Way of the Warrior up here. And if you're looking for something again, that's just kind of like a pump up, but not too hard to read, I would really recommend any of those. I don't want to skip too many of these books. They're all great. And I've read every book on this shelf because I'm a little weird about that. I don't love putting books on my shelf if I haven't read them, but I do believe there are some on this next shelf that I haven't read. So forgive me for that. So going on to the next shelf, I've got more either kind of intellectual spiritual books or business books or leadership books. So I've got like Unchristian on this shelf, which is like Barna studies on Christianity. Um, so it's a little more intellectual, a little more nerdy, but I enjoyed it. It kind of talks about the state of the church, which I think is a really interesting thing, but that might put you to sleep. Um, I've also got public speaking books on this shelf, like Confessions of a Public Speaker, Communicating for a Change, which if you are a pastor, if you are someone that teaches in any environment, if you want to communicate better, Communicating for a Change is a must read. It has so influenced the way that I craft my messages. And if you ever want to check out one of my messages, you can go under the Extended Talks playlist on my YouTube channel and you can see the fingerprints of this book all over my messages. Um, I don't know if I said this, but Talk Like Ted is also on there, another good public speaking book. A couple Simon Sinek books. Uh, this is the most recent book I finished, Leaders Eat Last. It's a great book about just kind of building teams and building circles of safety in your organization. You might find that interesting. That might sound horrible to you. I don't know. It's up to you. You don't have to read it. Uh, his books start with why, which is right next to it because it's by him as well. And I'm obsessed with making things organized is also really good. So start with why if you are looking to communicate effectively, whether as a personal brand, as a business 
or just in life, starting with why, and reading this book about start with why, is a great, great tool for that. Also on this, I have, I guess what I would call more mystical or more spiritual books. So from like Richard Rohr, The Naked Now, Why the Mystics Matter Now, Listening for the Heartbeat of God. These are either, some of them are about Celtic spirituality, some are, Richard Rohr is a Catholic theologian, but they're all just, they kind of tap into a Christian tradition that I'm not as familiar with, but all really good books there. A couple C.S. Lewis books, that's just a must if you are a Christian, you have to read C.S. Lewis. It's pretty much like the Bible than C.S. Lewis. That's kind of a joke, but do read C.S. Lewis, he's great. If you're gonna start anywhere, I'd say Mere Christianity is the place to start this book. I don't know how he packed that much of a punch in this short of a book, but he did it and it's incredible. What other C.S. Lewis books do I have here? I've got Letters to Malcolm. I have two copies of Mere Christianity, apparently. Screw tape letters. Um, it's not up here, but I've also read his book on hell, which I can't think of, but when I remember, I will put across the video somewhere here. All right, going down to the third shelf, which you can't see easily from up there, but I lost my tripod. I think I left it at work and it's awkwardly placed. The camera is awkwardly placed on this other thing, so I can't, I'll grab the books and I'll show them to you. So the third shelf is the nerdiest of them all. So I've got all my N.T. Wright books down here. Um, I'm currently about halfway through this guy, which is just a behemoth of a book, but I would totally recommend if you are an absolute nerd. If not, don't read it, you'll hate me, and I don't want you to hate me. But yeah, this is a great book on just kind of what first century uh, Israel, Palestine would have been like. What would the people of the New Testament have been living with every day? What would Jesus of culture looked like. It was a really, it is a really fascinating read to me, a very slow read, but I've learned so much from this and it's really informed my thinking about just Jewish culture and paradigms of that time. So if you're into that kind of thing, super great book. Also by N.T. Wright, I've got Surprised by Hope down here. I've got The Divine Conspiracy by Dallas Willard, which is a really good book. Unfortunately, I didn't actually finish it. Confession, I got a decent way through and got bored. I'll probably come back to it. It's a great book. He just takes a lot of words to say things that don't need that many words. So I'm, I'm sorry, Dallas Willard, but it is a great book. I should finish it and you should probably try it too. All right, down here also, I have just a couple of school books. I've got Reading Biblical Narrative by J.P. Folkelman. I've got Echoes of Scripture in the Letters of Paul which has like just the wildest uh, cover art there, if you're into that kind of thing. Trajectories, which is by one of my professors. Metaphors We Live By, which was a Bible project recommendation. And then I'll get up close and personal so you guys can see some of this stuff. I have all of N.T. Wright's New Testament commentary there and a ukulele over here because my room is a mess. But anyway, here are some of those other books I was talking about down here. Side note, holding a camera like this is very hard. Much respect to you vloggers out there. I, I don't know how you do it. That's impressive. Go you guys. Anyway, I'm gonna put the camera back up there because this is hard. Okay, camera's back up there. Lastly, I have some other books over here, which I've got Vine's Expository Dictionary of Old Testament and New Testament Words, which if you don't speak Hebrew and Greek, but want to know kind of some of the just original words behind the text, that is a great indispensable start. I've got the Bible background commentary, or the IVP Bible background commentary, which goes with the NIV cultural background study Bible, um, which I use frequently, so they mesh really well together. The authors of the commentary are the same people who authored the notes in that study Bible, so it just kind of expands a little on that, and I found that to be really helpful for commentaries that are as broad as, you know, Old Testament as a whole and New Testament, rather than buying individual commentaries. But you don't need to buy commentaries per se. There's so many great ones online. I do like having some print ones, whether for schoolwork or I would keep them at my desk when I was writing messages and whatnot, but I'll show you them in a second right over here. Lastly, I have 
the Dictionary for Theological Interpretation of the Bible, which is as riveting as it sounds. It's a huge book, and it's awfully, awfully nerdy, but again, that was another school book, and I found it really helpful, but it's mainly different articles, and you wouldn't read it for fun unless you're super weird like me sometimes. And lastly, I have Wilmington's Guide to the Bible, which is just a really nice uh, overview of kind of just evangelical thought on the Bible. I think he does a good justice to evangelical thought. There's parts of it that I would disagree with. There's things that evangelicals might disagree with me on. I would loosely affiliate myself with evangelicals. We're not getting into all of that right now, though. You don't really care. This is about my books. So anyway, that's my bookshelf. I have a lot more books downstairs that are fiction and whatnot, but these are my nonfiction books, and I hope you got something out of this. At the very least, you got to see some books. Maybe you got some book recommendations of books you haven't read before, and maybe you have a reason now to tell me to never make a video like this again. <laughs> so guys, if you watch this whole thing, shouts to you. You're the best. This video was very half thought out. I'm still not feeling great, so my head's probably not working that well. But all in all, this is my bookshelf. I love books. These books have shaped my thinking, each of them in a different way, and I hope you check some of them out. If you have any questions about the books that are over here, or if you're one of the people that have my books, that aren't on this shelf because you haven't given them back to me, I'll take them. <laughs> Seriously though guys, thank you for watching this, you're the best. If you want to see more videos that aren't like this but are also by me, you can click subscribe uh, down below. Click like on this video if you did like it. Give me a comment letting me know what you think of this more informal style video and if you have questions about anything at all. Until then, I will see you guys this weekend when I post the second video of this week. So, see you guys then. Peace.